I'm sitting here with Tim Danbrook. Yes. Yeah. Uh, adult survivor of childhood sexual abuse. Not afraid to talk about it. And uh, actually, he's an extraordinary guy. He uh -huh. has... Hey, none, none of that. Hey, uh, you'll uh, shut me right down. <laughs> Compliments do that. Okay. I like him. Up to him what he wants to do with that. Uh, but we were talking about what happens or how does one first mention this to someone else? If you are that someone else, how do you handle that disclosure? And uh, Tim offers some good insights about handling the disclosure, somebody coming to you and saying they have been uh, sexually abused. Yeah, okay, so uh, there's two sides to the equation. That would be uh, the, the victim yep. coming forward at a point when they probably many times for the first time ever mm. have felt comfortable enough to start, and they start looking for somebody to talk to on the issue of the fact that they've been abused. And so what happens is um, they'll come up, They'll, they'll start going to people that, you know, friends or family members or whatever. And um, a lot of family members might have similar issues and they don't realize it. Mm. And so what will happen is the person that they've come up to will either do one of two things. They'll recognize right away and they'll step in and have the conversation because they're comfortable with it. Uh, others will be triggered or not comfortable. They'll get antsy about it. And however they address it, they'll... they'll in thinking that they're trying to help, they'll be telling a victim, put it behind you, you know, the past is the past, buck up, look to the future, blah, blah, blah. All, all what would seem to be good advice, but really they just can't deal with it themselves. So they're trying to get it behind them or try to get the person, you know, get they're over. They're dealing with their own discomfort about the disclosure. And that's what that whole dialogue would be about. Mm. And then, of course, the victim becomes victimized one more time. Uh, on, you know, no fault of the of inadvertently. The person. Inadvertently, exactly. So what happens is, if you're if somebody approaches you, what right away you you know whether you're going to be comfortable with this or not. And if you're not, absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's a horrendous subject. Who the hell would ever want to talk about that subject if they didn't have to? So the thing is, if you're not comfortable, you just you just tell the person that you're not comfortable. You don't feel that you could address the issue, and you want to make sure that it gets done properly and you know that they need uh, somebody so you're going to help them find somebody and that, and that you should work together to do that and if you don't you know you don't have a that person needs to talk to somebody they don't need to talk to you they need to talk to somebody so if you're not comfortable or that you could do it properly or that you're concerned how you might affect them if you do it don't do it properly which would be an honest concern so you would tell them let's 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 find you someone let's find you someone to, to look into it and there's lots of great people in the community, and you, you'll almost recognize right away. You know, you'll remember somebody you know that that addresses those, that sort of thing. Phone the municipality; they'll give you a list of people right away to call. They'll 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 have local organizations. You phone the organization; they'll have somebody specifically, especially in crisis. If you're at that point and you you you've been stuffing this stuff for 30 years, and you're finally, you know, it's come to a head, and you can't stuff it any longer. You need to address it now. They'll the, any municipality will have a list of people. That you can call. There's uh, there's good people in our municipality, any municipality in in, in North America. Actually. So so I'm going to summarize. Okay. Um, somebody is uh, can no longer keep the secret. They need right. to tell somebody. They haven't needed to, to talk about it. They may have chosen a friend, a loved one, a colleague, whatever. Then so much depends on that person how they manage it for how it's going to impact again. Yes, at that juncture, however that step gets taken. Uh, can make a big difference because if a victim has a bad experience right there, they may stuff it again and go away for 10 years. So so um, hear them through. Don't feel like you have to resolve all their problems. If it's hard for you to manage, at least uh, don't dismiss and offer, um, maybe I can help you to find the right help. Yeah, like uh, get get... Get to the point where they have, where you, you explain them as quickly and as uh, in as positive a way as you can. You can't deal with this. You have, you just cannot deal with it. But you want to help them deal with it. Like get from A to Z as quickly as you can, because triggering like between two people triggering that the 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 potential for going wrong is so great. Mm. When when if you can get get the situation settle down and get directly to the point where okay you and me are going to find you some help that's that's what's going to happen here because i i can't deal with this right now but i do know we want to deal with it so let's let's 
turn to that and let's start get the phone book out let's go at it let's call him this whatever and it gets it past it and then the two people can still remain with a common goal of getting that person some help and 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 nobody has to talk about something that they're not comfortable talking about and they shouldn't have to thanks tim um Thank you, th Jerry. this is just um some sound practical advice from someone who's been there someone who gets it and uh wants to help others um manage this if if that's their experience as well thanks gary